Hi, and welcome to this quick tutorial on getting started using Google Stop Motion Animator. This is an extension that can be found on the Google Chrome web browser and is a valuable tool for any computer or Chromebook with a webcam. If you haven't already accessed one of the links in my presentation, you can find the app by simply searching for Stop Motion Animator in the Google search bar. From here, the link to the web store will allow you to add the extension to your browser. Since I've already done that, I'm going to open a new tab and access it through the Apps button on my Favorites bar. It has a nifty little icon that looks like an old school camera. If you click here, you will launch the web app. Now that we've launched the app, you can get a clear view of the interface. The preview screen displays whatever your camera is facing. In this case, I've got a scene set up using a Hot Wheels car. I also have a purple folder set up behind it, which I would recommend to minimize background movement. The on-off button turns the camera on and off. Pretty self-explanatory. The capture button takes a single picture. The spacebar is actually a shortcut for this and is really helpful on Chromebooks. The undo button will delete the last picture taken. Play stop will play back the images you've captured in order. The clear button will delete everything, so be careful with that. And we're not going to record audio this time, so we won't use these two buttons, but you can figure out what they do on your own. Save will allow you to save what you have completed as a video file, and Load will allow you to pick up where you last left off. On a Windows computer, this will access local drives, but on a Chromebook, it will save to the Google Drive. I highly recommend backing up all stop motion files to your Google Drive for easy access. Now that we're ready to record, the first step I usually have my students take is to click the capture button a few times to establish a keyframe. This will create a split second in the animation where there is no movement and it helps if you are editing the video afterwards. If you play this back, you won't see any movement, but you will have a starting spot. The next step is to begin moving the object that you want to animate a little bit at a time and capturing a new image between each movement. You will notice that my hand and the car appear transparent on screen when they're moving. This is called the onion skin effect, and it allows you to differentiate between your new image versus the old one. This is a time-consuming process so I sped it up to six times its actual speed. There are a total of 28 pictures taken in this animation. Now that we've moved the car completely across the field of view for the camera, we have enough images saved to string together a few seconds of animation. You'll notice when you get ready for playback that there is a slide tool at the bottom of the preview screen. If you play it back with the slide tool in the very middle, it will replay it at six frames per second. You can slow this down and replay it much slower, but it will create a much choppier version of your animation. If you'd like to speed it up to make a much more fluid version of your animation, you can speed it up to the fast side. It's important to note that your animation will save at whatever speed is selected by the slide tool when you click the save icon. So you can play around with the speed a little, but make sure it's set to the middle when you're done. Do you like videos like this? You can find me on YouTube at Hero City Edworks or follow me on Twitter at Hero City Kevin.